Alleluia. Qui aque merum iscipotare. Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut nisi. Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Gaudia et laetare Virgo Maria, Alleluia. Quia surrexi Dominus vere, Alleluia. Ordemus. Deus qui per resurrectionem Filii Tui Domini nostri Iesu Christi, mundum et ificare dignatus est, presta quesmus, ut per res beneficem Virgine Maria, e petue capiamus gaudia vite, per iundum Christum Dominum nostrum, Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In Tuoi volontari Dei, ed Enkeli Tifica, Iudum Totum Eum, Iudica Medesa, Vicena Tatumem, De Gente Non Sancta, Ma Nomine Nini Godo Nostro Orrore. Que Tuus Deus Foti Tutum Eum, Quarte Christi, Quarte Christi, Sin Celus, Nel Tijme Iudum Tuus, E Mi Dei Lucem Tuus Veritatem Tuus, Miximem Tuus, Serum Tuus, Lux Serum Timon Tuus, Sanctum Tuum, Et Tabernacula Tua, Et In Tuoi volontari Dei, Ed Enkeli Tifica, Iudum Totum Eum, Corpide vulti vincitre, Deus teus meus, coi Christus anima mea, de quantus populus mea, sfer in Deo fuori mea troppo potevo ini, salutare vultus mea e Deus meus. Gloria Patria, Filio e Spiritu e Santo, sicur de arati principio e nunc et sempre, ed in secula seculorum, Amen. In tuoi volontari Dei, ed in cui li tipica e viuvo tutum eum, auditorum nostrum in nomine Domini, in cui feci cielo e terra. Confidio del impotente Dio, ad Maria e Figli, Confidio Deo mi potenti, Beate Maria, Sempre Virgine, Beate me cari Arcangelo, Beate Ioane Battista, Sancti Sepolti, Spetto e Paolo Omnibus, Sancti Sepificate, Qui io peccavi in inis cogitazione, Vevo e Papre, Meo culpa, meo culpa, meo maxima culpa, Ed io prego Beata Maria, Sempre Virgine, Beate me cari Arcangelo, Beate me Ioane Battista, Sancti Sepolti, Spetto e Paolo, Omnes Sancto se te Patre, Ora le pro me, ad omnium Deo nostro, Miseriato vesci, nipotens Deus, et misisotatis vesci, sveduta et vos et vita me tranam. Amen. In urgenziam associonem et remissionem, et adoro nos solum tribio et nomis omnipotente misericus Dominus. Amen. Deus, tu cuversa specifica vis nos, et plebs tu leta abitor in te, non sede nomis Dominum in tritobio ad tua, et salutare tu un gran nobis. Domine, gaudi l'azione mea, et clamo mes a te bene, Dominus hobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, Ordemus. Misericordia Domini plena estera, Alleluia. Verbo Domini Celi femati sunt, Alleluia, Alleluia. Exultate justi in Domino, rectus decit calodatio. Gloria Patri e Figlio e Spiritu e Santo, si coderat in principio e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Misericordia Domini plena estera. Alleluia. Verbo Domini Celi femati sunt. Alleluia. Alleluia. Fili eleison, fili eleison, fili eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, fili eleison, fili eleison, fili eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus done voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, in glorificamus te, in grazie tagimus tibi propria magna gloria tua. Domine Deus, res celestis, Deus Patria Magnipotens, Domine Figli Unigenite, Iesu Christe, Domine Deus, Omnus Dei, Filius Patris, qui tolis peccato mundi, misedere nobis. Qui tolis peccato mundi, sushi per deprecazione nostra, qui semis et extra patis, misedere nobis. Doniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe. 
Sanctum Sanctus Spiritui, Gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Exo Vobis et cum Spirito Tuo. Ordemus. Deibus, qui in fili tui humilitate a centum mundo beresisti, fidelibus tu es perpetuam concede letitiam, ut quos perpetue mortis erutuis vitatibus, laudis facias perturis ambitenis, per ingundum dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum filio tuum, fidelibum vivida regna ad unilitatis spiritus sancti Deus, per nomi a secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Concede nos fandus tuus quaesmus omni Deus perpetuamente si cobris sanitate gaudere, et gloriose beate Maria e sempre viginis et accessiam, et a presenzi di verrabiti spizia, et eterne per privilegizia. Ecclesi tue quaesmus domini precis totatus ad mite, utis luxis ad queste sasibus et enoibus unemessis, securi tibi servi et evitate, per dominum nostrum, che es un Christum filium tuum, che te in vivida regna ad unilitati, spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lex epistoli pia si petri apostoli. Carissimi, Christus passus es pro nobis, vobis vilinque in si centrum, ut sequamini vestigia eus. Qui peccatum non feci, nec inventus es dolo signore eus, qui com maleficere etur non maleficebat, com patere etur non cominabitur, tradebat auti iudicante si in muste, qui peccatum non stipsi petulit in pocore suo superminum, ut peccatis mortui justizi e vivamus, cuius libore sanazi estis, errati se in insicu tode derantes, de conversi estis nunc et pastorem et episcopum animarum vestravum. Deo gratia. Alleluia, alleluia. Cogno verum discipuli dominum Iesum in fractione panis. Alleluia. Ego sum pasto bonus e conosco oves meas, e conosco me me. Alleluia. Dominus Hobiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, sequentia Sancti Vangelii, secundum Giovannem, Gloria Tibi Domine. In ino tempore dixit Iesus Fariseis, Ego sum pasto bonus, bonus pasta animam suam de pro obibus suis, mecinardius autem et qui non es pastor, cuius non sunt obes proprie, fide glupem venenientem in dimitid obes et fugit, et lupus rapid et dispegit obes. Mecenarius autem fugit, quia mecenarius est, et non petin et adeum de obibus. Ego sum pasto bonus, e conosco me, e so conosco me me. Sigo nobin me pater, et ego anosco patrem, et anima me ampono pro obibus meis. Et alias obes habeo, que non sunt ex hoc obibi, et ilas oportet me aducere, et voce me amaudiunt, et fiet unum obile, et unus pasto. Laus tibi Christ. this, the second feria after the second Sunday of Easter, the epistle is taken from the first letter of St. Peter the Apostle. Beloved, Christ suffered for our sakes and left you his own example. You were to follow in his footsteps. He did no wrong, no treachery was found on his lips. He was ill spoken of and spoke no evil in return, suffered and did not threaten vengeance, gave himself up into the hands of injustice. So on the cross, his own body took the weight of our sins. We were to become dead to our sins and live for holiness. It was his wounds that healed you. Till then, you had been like sheep going astray. Now you have been brought back to him, your shepherd, who keeps watch over your souls. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. John. At this time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, whereas the hireling, who is no shepherd and does not claim the sheep as his own, 
abandons the sheep and takes to flight as soon as he sees the wolf coming. And so the wolf harries the sheep and scatters them. The hireling then takes to flight because he is only a hireling, because he has no concern over the sheep. I am the good shepherd. My sheep are known to me and know me, just as I am known to my father and know him. And for these sheep I am laying down my life. I have other sheep too, which do not belong to this fold. I must bring them in too. They will listen to my voice. So there will be one fold and one shepherd. Ave Maria, grazie plena Dominus tecum, benedicto tu mieribus e benedictus sub presentis tui Iesus, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, or pronomis peccatoribus, nunc et in alari mutis nostre. Amen. In nomine Spartis, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass. On this, as we said, the Monday after the second Sunday after Easter, which traditionally, as you might have guessed from today's Gospel and Epistle, known as Good Shepherd Sunday. We, we, we reflected yesterday upon the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ as our Good Shepherd, as one who looks out for his sheep, looks after his sheep, and about and of whom his sheep know and recognise him and his voice. Today, my brothers and sisters, let us think about the epistle from St Peter. Till then you have been like sheep going astray. Now you have been brought back to him, your shepherd, who keeps watch over your souls. Indeed, my brothers and sisters, as we reflected uh, yesterday, uh, our good shepherd is, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is none other than the good shepherd, i.e. our God and Father. Remember how we reflected that in the Old Testament, the uh, allegories relating to uh, the shepherd were of God and thus when our Lord said I am the good shepherd I am of course uh, meaning God uh, he uh, therefore was uh, uh, making the connection uh, expressing basically uh, revealing his divinity that he is uh, the good shepherd meaning that he is God uh, as well, the father of our souls, the shepherd of our souls. The first part of the epistle reminds us of how we ought to be living as Christians, and we reflected upon this uh, last week as well, and this of course is, is a salient theme of Paschal Tide. Uh, remember that uh, anciently, the church is celebrating with the neophytes uh, those who had been catechumen in Lent and who had been baptized on Holy Saturday. Thus, as newly baptized and now known as neophytes, they celebrated the whole octave of Easter in their white baptismal gowns and then uh, proceeded to receive instruction as neophytes in holiness, which is, as we have reflected, uh, is the, pers the purpose and the pursuit of the Christian life is to manifest holiness, is to develop and grow spiritually in holiness. And we do this, as St. Peter is telling us from this epistle today, of course, by following after and emulating the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we have reflected considerably well, as we are always reflecting, it is uh, achievable by, holiness is achievable by denying ourselves. By when we are presented with the opportunity to live sacrificially or live selfishly, to opt to live sacrificially. Because to live sacrificially means to live and express true charity, sacrificial love toward God and toward each other. And this is the most difficult thing for us as human beings to do. So, uh, so deep-seated within us is a, a, a sense of self, uh, of uh, self-satisfaction, of self-pleasing, of self-survival, uh, of sense of self, of self-will, that it's very difficult for us as humans to get over ourselves, to use a colloquial phrase. It's very difficult for us to 
think of ourselves in a secondary fashion. If you think about the way you generally react to anything in your life, you are the centre of your world, you are the centre of your universe, you are the centre of your experience of life. Everything revolves around you. And that is your world view, that is how you experience life. You relate everything to yourself. And so it's very difficult to counter that by thinking of others first, by putting and thinking of God first, by putting and thinking God's will first, by putting and thinking God's commandments first. However well-meaning we may sometimes be, however determined and full of good intent we may be, the thing that generally impedes and hampers our growth in holiness is ourselves and is the giving in to ourselves that we allow ourselves uh, on a general basis. Sometimes we do it uh, subconsciously. We're not even aware of it. Sometimes we do it deliberately, consciously. And certainly whenever we have to make a decision about doing something, uh, that is the key moment where we may choose deliberately or not to live sacrificially or to live selfishly. So, for example, we might think uh, when we wake up in the morning, we might think to ourselves, uh, the night before I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'm going to spend an hour in silence and prayer and meditation and then I am going to spend half an hour in Lectio Divina, reading a portion of the Bible prayerfully and meditatively. And then I'm going to go to uh, daily mass and then I'm going to go to breakfast. The night before you may be absolutely intent on that and then the next morning you wake up, the alarm goes off, Perhaps you didn't sleep so well, you press snooze. Before you know it, half an hour has been lost already. Then you start to debate with yourself as to how much of what you intended the night before is achievable, is doable, is practical, and suddenly all the excuses come out as to why you can't do it. And eventually those good intentions, if we are not careful, become as dust. They disappear. And then we excuse ourselves by saying, well, I can't do it now. It's over and done with. Move on. We're all guilty of it, my brothers and sisters, all of us. It's part of the reason why, for example, that uh, religious in community have long had the tradition of ringing bells or uh, banging wood uh, to keep, uh, to, to uh, announce uh, the hours of the liturgy. Uh, why even sometimes uh, in some communities they ring a bell down the dormitory uh, or they knock on people's doors and wait for a response uh, and uh, because it is, this is a, a normal phenomena of, of us as human beings. Despite our intentions, we often fail because of ourselves, because of ourselves. In religious communities then, they try to make sure, as one of the benefits of living in a religious house, they try to make sure that everyone does get up, that everyone does get to the chapel or to the church for the office. Those of us who are pursuing holiness, living in the world, of course then, are not as fortunate. We're not as fortunate. Even if, for example, and I know one priest uh, who uh, had a series of alarms on his mobile phone uh, that would ring uh, to announce the various hours for uh, the divine office. And uh, he still struggled. He still struggled. It's very difficult when we are on our own. And this is why, sadly, you know, when we think of the uh, description of the church in the second chapter of Acts, uh, and we compare it to the church today. In the early church they met, they gathered together daily. They met for worship together daily. 
They ate together daily. They shared their things together daily. They shared the Eucharist. They celebrated and offered the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass daily. They lived the Lord's Prayer. They lived to worship God. They lived to make manifest God's will on earth as it is in heaven. They received daily the bread of the Holy Eucharist. And they strove to live in love and charity with others. And we, my brothers and sisters, ought to be striving as much as we can to do the same. Now I know as well as anyone that modern life is difficult. There are all sorts of uh, pressures and demands on our time, especially uh, those of us who, are, uh, who have to work uh, for a living. Our time sometimes is not our own during the day. Our time is not our own. And yet, this has always been the case. This is nothing new. We sometimes think that the way we live now is so much uh, different, is so different from times previously. But as I saw on social media, uh, on Facebook actually, uh, a couple of days ago, somebody posted an old advertisement for a uh, church in New York which had masses on Sundays beginning from 2.30 a.m., and thus every half an hour and on the hour afterwards till lunchtime and then in the week and similar hours of mass. Indeed Pius XII introduced the notion of mass in the evening which before had been an unheard of uh, thing in the church. Uh, he introduced the possibility of offering mass in the evening to enable uh, workers to go to work and it was of course for the faithful that those early masses uh, were put on so early in the day to try and accommodate to try and enable and facilitate uh, the faithful the Christians to be able to receive their daily bread in the Holy Eucharist to come for worship and indeed to sacralize their day by having begun the day in worship. There are very few, I'm sad to say, uh, priests these days who would get up at those sort of hours in the morning or even of the night uh, to offer uh, Mass. But sadder to say that in large part is because the demand is no longer there. And this touches on that apostasy that we have also reflected on recently. This great falling away from the faith and from the observance of the faith by so many Christians. Again, through lack of catechesis, through lack of proper instruction as to what it means to be an Orthodox Catholic. About 50 years ago, people thought that uh, all the rules, as it were, of living a Catholic life had been thrown out the window as though the uh, book had been torn up and shred apart. And the trouble is, is that uh, because of that sort of attitude, which at once seemed liberating, has actually resulted in this mass apostasy, this mass falling away from the faith. And it becomes very difficult then for Christians to be Christians, for those who want to be Christians, for those who'd like to go to daily mass, for those who would like to go to church on a daily basis and uh, for those who would like to live as the early church lived in the second Acts of the Apostles, it's nigh impossible to realise without perhaps going to joining a religious community or living near a religious community and attending uh, the monastery chapel. And this is a great shame, a great pity. And in some ways this has come about because of our ability to excuse ourselves. Oh, well, of course, you know, uh, if people are working 
an eight hour day, then uh, you know, it's unrealistic to expect anyone to get up earlier and, and worship God. Really? Isn't the first commandment to love the Lord your God? To have no other idols before him? No other priorities, in other words? Does our Lord Jesus Christ himself, our good shepherd, not say the first of the greatest commandments is this, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength? And you see, my brothers and sisters, how we fail. It is not loving God to refuse him what is owed to him by those who say they love him by putting other priorities and needs and concerns first. You see how easily we all of us are guilty of it. And the trouble is, is that, as I say, we excuse ourselves and then we forgive ourselves. And then we give up. And that's the, that is the reality, the sad reality of the church today. That in one part of the body is being persecuted, is being murdered, mutilated, raped, pillaged, displaced, dispersed destroyed for the faith whilst the other part of the body couldn't care less this can't be right my brothers and sisters and is it any wonder is it any wonder that the preaching of the gospel is impeded God's will is impeded, is prevented by the very people themselves who proclaim to be the manifestation of his will on earth. The very people who are supposed to do his will do not do his will. And thus the gospel is not preached, the gospel is not lived, and souls are lost. Souls are damned. Souls die without knowing God's love for them. And this is why, my brothers and sisters, this is why the church, particularly in the West, is dying. And no amount of uh, happy clappy music and uh, turning uh, church services into uh, pop concerts and all the rest of it is going to change that. Serving coffee and uh, eating cookies and uh, playing with dough and plasticine and paints and making a mess is going to change any of that. None of that's going to work. Why not? Because there is no sacrifice. There is no love. There's what some people might think of as loving, as being nice, There is what some people may think is enough love to be demonstrated to God or to others. But it's rarely at a cost. It's rarely a sacrifice. It's simply what people are prepared to do. It doesn't go beyond what is necessary. 
it doesn't go beyond the bare minimum. And it's not, my brothers and sisters, acceptable for people to say, to refuse to give God everything. Nowhere in Scripture will you find that. first of the, old, of the Ten Commandments, love the Lord your God. The first of the Great Commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And until, my brothers and sisters, we as Christians, globally, start to live like that, only then, Will the gospel truly be proclaimed? Only then will the world recognise us as Christ's disciples. Because only then will true love, sacrificial love, be made known, be made manifest. So on the cross, his own body took the weight of our sins. We were to become dead to our sins and live for holiness. The question each and every one of us must ask ourselves is, are we living for holiness? Are we living for God? Or are we living for for ourselves. And yes, my brothers and sisters, I can finish this on a more positive tone if it will salve and soothe your conscience. Yes, of course, those who earnestly and truly repent, who are sincerely humble and contrite before God, can be forgiven such transgression. Yes, the grace and power of God through the Holy Spirit has been given to the sacred ministers in his church to give his absolution to those who go to confession and repent of their sins and repent of their wrongdoing. Repent! But it is contingent, my brothers and sisters, on repentance, and repentance means to resolve to not do it again too. Yes, of course, God forgives those who repent, but only those who repent. Remember what we were told on Ash Wednesday. Turn to me with all your hearts. Let us, my brothers and sisters, in the pursuit of holiness, Turn to him with all our hearts and with all our mind and with all our strength. Let us strive to put God first in our lives, for in so doing, all other blessings will flow. We see this in the lives of innumerable saints through the centuries. Those who lived sacrificially for God were rewarded in all sorts of ways. Sometimes by abundance of his providence in this life, always by the prospect of eternal life and an heavenly reward. Let us so strive, for it is only in such striving and in such pursuit of holiness that we may hope to become one with him and he in us. Let us listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd who calls us to be one with him. And let us share his voice, make known his voice to the world, to all those around us, that they too may become one in him. To 
love through sacrifice. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum et in Spirito Tuo. Guarda Deus. Degus Deus meus, ad te de luce vigilo, et in nomine Tuo levavo manus meas. Alleluia.
Terronia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obispum, et cum spirito tuo, sus un corda, habemus ad dominum, gracias ad amus, domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum et tecone salutare, et equitem domini omni tempore, sed in hoc potissimum gloriosius predicare, cum pasto nostrum immolatus es Christus, ipse en in venus et faulus cui absurit peccatum mundi, cui morte nostre moriendo distruxi de vita resurgendo reperdavi, Et in Deo come Angelis et Archangelis, con tronis et dominationibus, con voi omni milizia e celestis et decibus, in un gloria e tu et animus in e fine di centres. Sanctus. 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 Dominus Deus, Sabaoth, plenis un cieli et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini. Hosanna in excelsis.
ਕੁਝ ਕੋਲ ਕੋ ਜਗਤ ਦੌੜ ਗਈ Ecce amnus Dei, <coughs> ecce qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine non sum dignus, ut in presso tectum meum, se tantum de glebo, et se nabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in presso tectum meum, se tantum de glebo, et se nabitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut in presso tectum meum, se tantum de glebo, et se nabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online are unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament. We invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things and I desire thee in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. And as though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee, permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Sum pastor bonus, alleluia. 
É conosco uma vez mais, é conosco uma vez mais. Aleluia, aleluia. Dominus obiscum et in spirito tuo. Ordemus. Presta nobis paesmos omnipotens Deus, ut vivificationis tu et ratiam consequentes, em tuo santo mundo e glória. Per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tu, Qui te cum vive da regna ad unanimitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Sum se stobile salutis nostre subsidiis, da paesmus feate marges et vicinis patrocinis non subico e protegi, in cuius veneratione e tua ciudimus mestazzi. Pais mustabile Deus nostre, ut quas divina triviuis facicipazioni gratene, umanis nos signos sapceri filicuis. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tu, qui tecum vivida regna ad unanimitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, ide misa est, Deo gratia. In nome Domini benedictum, et sob non cadusque, in secula, o tutorum nostri, in nome de Domini, qui feci celum et terram, benedicat vos, omnipotens Deus. Ate, et filius, Espíritu Santo, Amén. Dominus obispo, e con Espíritu tu, inizium sancti evangelii, secundum Giovanni, gloria a ti, vita. En principio, ore verbum, e verbum, ore tablo Deum, e Deus, ore verbum, alterati in principio, ago Deum, omnia primso facto, sunt, e sinso facto, e sinso facto, e es, e niso vita erati, vita erati, lux omnia, e lux in tenebres, lux in tenebres, e non comprehenderum, Fui tomo visto su del cognome della Giovanna, e si verifi testimoni, mu testimoni che vere tu lumine son espresso in tu ino. Non è reti dei luce, lu testimoni che vere tu lumine, e arre lux vere qua lumina tamnem, hamnem, veniente e vimum fundo. Mi mundo erati monus primsum factus es, e monus erano cognosi, di propri e veri ci sono non ci perdo, di corpo ad autem ci perdo, e un desco restato in figlio stai fieri. Is per crendere in nomine eus, qui non è sanguinibus, nex vor mortati carnis, nex vor mortati viris, e rit dermati sunt. E verum carro factum es, Et abitavit in nobis et vinimus gloriam eus gloriam quas unus genetia pater, per grazia et veritatis. Deo grazia. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve, to thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on thy people who cry to thee by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, and thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy and goodness in our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. 
May St. Catherine of Stenning pray for us. May St. Wilfrid of York pray for us. May St. Louis of Alfriston pray for us. May St. Richard of Chichester pray for us. May Our Lady of Walsingham pray for us. May our heavenly guardian angels pray for us. May our holy patron saints pray for us. May our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us.